I, 37-year-old female, got the flu two weeks ago. I got it pretty bad. I had gastrointestinal issues on top of the usual cold symptoms. I was in bed for four days with a fever ranging from 103, 106 degrees Fahrenheit, plus chills, body aches, and vomiting. It was awful. My husband, to his credit, did take care of me. He took a day off of work when he needed to, took care of the kids, 14-year-old, 6-year-old, 4-year-old, and 1-year-old solo, and made sure I was staying hydrated, asked if I needed anything, etc. However, he's not me, and there are things that didn't get done. I'm a stay-at-home mom and manage the majority of household chores. He works long hours, and you can't do chores if you're not home. When he is home, he does split things with me mostly fairly. He's not used to having the kids by himself for days on end, though. Laundry piled up, the kids made epic messes, the dog poop didn't get picked up in the backyard, and a bunch of other random tasks didn't get done. He also gave the kids stickers, which they stuck to our hardwood floors, windows, and furniture. I have to scrape them all off one by one. I'm feeling better now, but not 100%. I'm starting to dig us out of the hole we fell into. Today, my husband told me that he was going to take a few days off to recharge. I told him we could discuss this next week, but right now I really needed his help with the kids so I could reset our lives and get back to normal. He got a little upset and I snapped at him and said that maybe if he had done more than the absolute minimum when I was sick, it would be a different story. He's not happy with me and I'm wondering if I am the jerk for what I said. Edit. I want to add that a lot of the chores that need to get done benefit him as well. He also doesn't have any clean underwear and he would like for me to prepare his lunches for the week. I didn't say he could never have a day off, just that I'd like to catch us up before he took the break. Edit 2. I have read and am reading the responses as much as I'm able. I am not totally surprised at how divided they are. It's hard to see the other side in this. I am guilty of that as well. I've had a conversation with my husband, and it's going to be a conversation we keep having. To clarify a few points, one, my husband was not working during this time. He took one day off and then had a day off regardless, and then had two days off due to weather. So he was not working while juggling all of this. Two, my 14-year-old son is extremely helpful, but he's also in school all day, in sports or play rehearsals after school, and responsible for his homework. He is pretty self-contained and does help a great deal with his siblings, but he's a busy kid, and he's a kid. I don't have the same expectations from him that I do from a grown man. I think more than anything, I am disappointed at how bad things got in just a few days. No one ate a fruit or a vegetable. The dishes are in the wrong spot. There was a human turd in the wash, which I discovered in the dryer. That turd will haunt me for the rest of my life. It's one of the worst things I've ever had to clean. My husband claims he didn't finish the laundry because he doesn't know where any of it goes which is how the turd was left as a fun surprise for me. All of this has opened my eyes to the fact that I'm married to someone who doesn't know where our dishes go. That must mean I do the dishes 100% of the time. I quit my job because my husband needed open availability to grow his business. I thought we were doing what was best for our family. I had no idea what the fallout of that would be. I don't think my husband is totally happy with the arrangement either. He seems to feel some deep shame about it, which is why he got defensive. So I was probably not as kind as I could have been when he asked if he could take days off from work and essentially disappear for three, four days. No work, no family, no responsibilities. I haven't had that in 14 years. And maybe the problem isn't that he asked for it. Maybe the problem is that I also need time like that. The problem is that we are both burnt the frick out for different reasons. Overall, I think I hope this is going to be the catalyst for some change in my house. I appreciate everyone's insight. It's definitely helped me see my husband's side, and it's helped him see mine. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. Honestly, the basics of not picking up the dog poo is enough for me to sigh at his incompetence. Just totally gross in my opinion. The rest of it, though, is just kind of dumb and seems like he expects they're your jobs. The stickers, for example, the kids or him, should be the ones cleaning that up. The laundry... Everyone needs clothes. Not doing that is just a fool move. Sounds like weaponized incompetence to me. I do think you could have had the conversation a little better, but I also get how pissed off you must have been that you're still getting back to full health 
and you've essentially got to work double time to get the house back in order, and he wants some time off because he's had to take care of the kids for a few days. He is entitled to time off, but now isn't the right time for sitting on your butt and relaxing. Comment 2. Esach Perspective You're both in the wrong. It's purely a communication issue. Did he do everything perfectly while you were laid up? Of course not. You couldn't do his job perfectly either. Did he make the effort? He did. And you do actually appreciate that. Similarly, does he deserve appreciation for his effort? Yes. But does he deserve to immediately take days to recharge? Nope, bud, that's not how life works. You just need to tell him clearly and calmly how much you appreciate what he does for the family, and he needs to do the same. Fundamentally, that's what you're both asking for. Him by inappropriately demanding time off, and you by snapping and being rude. Now, for the update, thanks for all the comments on my last post. So after that whole mess with the flu and the house falling apart, things took a turn. My husband, he went ahead and took those days off anyway. Just up and left, no warning leaving me with the kids in the chaos. I was furious, to say the least. I mean, I get needing a break, but the timing? It was like a slap in the face. While he was gone, the sink decided to clog up. Water everywhere, kids screaming, and me trying to keep it together. I called a plumber, but guess what? It was something my husband could have easily fixed if he'd been there. The bill wasn't pretty, and when I told him over the phone, he just said, Sorry, I needed this. Needed this? What about what the kids and I needed? Then as if things couldn't get worse, our 14-year-old got suspended from school. He got into a fight defending his little brother from a bully. I was proud of him for standing up for his sibling, but it was another thing to deal with. I had to go to the school, talk to the principal, and it was just a lot. My husband, when I told him, he just said, handle it, you're good at that. Handle it? I was barely hanging on. The day my husband came back, he found me in tears, scrubbing sticker residue off the floor. He tried to hug me, but I pushed him away. I couldn't even look at him. That's when he dropped the bomb. He'd been thinking, and he wanted a separation. Said he felt trapped, that he couldn't be the husband or father we needed. I was stunned. After everything, this is what he comes to? I didn't have time to process it because right then the baby started crying, and the other kids were fighting again. So I just went into autopilot. I took care of the kids, made dinner, did the laundry, all while this new reality was setting in. He was serious. He started packing a bag, talking about how he'd stay at his brother's place for a while. The next day he was gone, just like that. The kids were confused, asking where daddy was, and I had to tell them he was taking some time to think about things. The oldest, he knew something was up, but the younger ones just missed their dad. I've been trying to keep it together for the kids' sake, but inside, I'm a mess. I feel betrayed, abandoned. I gave up my job for his career, for our family, and now he just walks away. It's not fair. But then life isn't fair, is it? I've been talking to a lawyer trying to figure out what comes next. I need to think about the kids, about how we're going to get by. It's overwhelming, and sometimes late at night, I wonder if I could have done something different. But then I remember the turd in the dryer, the stickers on the floor, and I know I've been doing everything I can. I'm not sure what the future holds, but I'm trying to stay strong. For the kids, for myself, it's not easy, but I'm doing my best. That's all I can do, right? Thanks for reading. Re my girlfriend stood me up for dinner to meet her ex. So I ended things and watched her realize she lost the best thing she ever had. Am I the idiot for leaving my girlfriend because I didn't want to wait for her anymore? Here is a short story. Me, a 25-year-old male, and my girlfriend, who is 22, were supposed to meet up to make dinner and watch a movie at my place. I was stuck at school and told her I'll be done by 5 p.m. She asked me if I could pick her up when I was done, which I agreed to. A little after 5 p.m., I drove to get her. When I arrived, I let her know by both text and by trying to call her. She didn't answer any of them. I then continued to wait for 20 plus minutes. She didn't come out, and I knew she had seen my message, so I just drove home. While driving home, she sent me a text telling me she was in a discussion with her friend and couldn't leave. She then asked me if I now could come get her again, now that she was done. I obliged and drove back there. Then the same thing happened again. 
and I ended up waiting at least 20 more minutes until I said forget it and drove home to make dinner alone. Now it's been over two hours since we were originally supposed to make dinner. Later, she sent me a text asking if I was irritated and mad at her, to which I answered a clear yes. Now she is mad at me for being insensitive and for saying I got irritated by waiting that long. Sorry for the long story. So am I the idiot here? And just to clarify, the discussion turned out to be nothing serious. Update, after she went on a full rant over messages, I chose not to answer and pretty much ghosted her. My point of view was that if she can't understand how disrespectful she was, then this relationship wouldn't work. Since then, she has tried to call me a couple of times, and I answered one of them, where I calmly explained my point of view and asked her point blank if she could elaborate on why I am in the wrong here, which she couldn't. After that point, I, I just said that I need less stress in my life, not more, and have ghosted her since. This was approximately two hours ago. Some of you have asked about how long we have been together, etc. I don't want to go into full detail, but the relationship is somewhat new and we haven't been dating for more than six months. Thank you all for the comments and advice. I have always been taught to be respectful of women, especially those I date and I try to be, but it looks like that value was used against me. I will tread more carefully next time and make sure to not be the doormat. Update two, there have been a lot of comments that it would be immature to ghost her. I have already addressed it, but I'll write it here as well. I don't plan on ghosting her, so my wording here was bad. I chose not to answer her to let her calm down, so she and I don't say something we might regret. I will definitely talk to her soon and break up in a respectful way. Ghosting is almost never okay. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, not the idiot. I wouldn't have driven back in the first place, but I also have very little patience for people disrespecting me so little that they think it's okay to waste my time. Then again, my dad's rule was 10 minutes. Things happen, so you get a bit of a grace period. But 20 minutes? He'd be long gone. I'm that way too. Comment 2. LOL, I was ready to skewer you, but not the idiot. Wow, that's incredibly inconsiderate behavior. To not even let you know what's going on. Expecting to come back and then do it to you again. Are you sure she isn't just trying to make you break up with her? Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around. A lot has happened since my last post. So I thought I was done with her, right? But then she shows up at my door, out of the blue, crying and apologizing. She said she had a huge secret that she needed to tell me in person. I let her in because, well, I guess I'm a sucker for tears. She tells me she's been dealing with family issues, her brother's been in trouble with the law, and she's been trying to help him out. That's why she was so distracted and kept me waiting. I felt a twinge of guilt for being so harsh, but I was still mad. We talked for hours and she begged for another chance. I told her I needed time to think. After she left, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I decided to do a little digging. Turns out her brother was arrested for something serious, but the timeline didn't add up. She was lying about the reason she was distracted. Before I could confront her, my phone blew up with messages from a number I didn't recognize. It was her ex claiming they'd been seeing each other behind my back. He sent screenshots of their texts as proof. I was boiling with anger. I called her and she denied everything, said her ex was trying to break us up because he was obsessed with her. I didn't know who to believe. I met up with her ex and he showed me a photo of them together, time stamped for one of the nights she was supposedly helping her brother. I was done. I felt like a fool for ever giving her the benefit of the doubt. I confronted her and she finally broke down and admitted to everything. She said she was confused and didn't know what she wanted. I told her I knew exactly what I didn't want her. I thought that was the end of it, but life had another curveball for me. A few days later, I got a call from a mutual friend. He told me that my now ex-girlfriend was in the hospital. She'd been in an accident. Despite everything, I rushed over. She was okay, just a few broken bones, but it was a reality check. I stayed with her until her family arrived, and then I left without saying a word. I thought I'd feel satisfied seeing her pay for her lies, but I just felt empty. I realized I was better off without the drama, but it didn't make the betrayal sting any less. I've been keeping to myself since then, trying to move on. Thanks for reading. My aunt cheated on uncle and lied about my cousin's paternity. But when she tried to steal my inheritance with fake letters, I exposed her lies and secured a future for the innocent.
by funding my cousin's kid's education and my own. I, 32-year-old female, used to have this really cool Uncle Bill. He and my Aunt Sarah, 55-year-old female, started dating when I was three, and we just had this type of instant bond. I love this guy, and he spoiled me to pieces. It was a constant joke that the only reason he married my aunt was so I'd officially be his niece. He was ecstatic when my Aunt Sarah became pregnant because being a dad was something that he always wanted and adored my cousin Julie, 24-year-old female, for the first few years of her life. Then one day while Bill was out of town, I was sleeping over and in the middle of the night, I woke up to use the bathroom and heard the back door slam. It had a very distinct sound. I was curious and peeked out the window from the room that I was in that was overlooking the backyard. There was a man there talking to my aunt, laughing and hugging before he went away, and the way that he left was not circling around to the front where the other cars would be going. He went over the fence and I thought that was weird. I went back to sleep and when I woke up Bill was back and without thinking I mentioned what I saw during breakfast. Sarah tried playing it off but she was weird about it. Unfortunately, that began an avalanche of mess, and not only did it come out that Sarah was having an affair and Julie wasn't his, but my mom and maternal grandparents knew and said nothing. There was a divorce, and while Bill let Sarah have the house he knew she couldn't afford to maintain it, left the country, he had dual citizenship, and never tried to stay in contact with Julie. It was heartbreaking. I missed Bill, and I was sad for my cousin, so I became a target for her and Sarah's anger. In their mind, if I hadn't said anything, Bill would have stayed. I felt so guilty about it for years that I accepted their acts of wrath in silence. But when Julie hacked my email to reject my offer of admissions to my dream college and two scholarships, I just couldn't take it anymore. There was a huge blowout between my mom and Sarah. We've all been very low contact since. Fast forward to 2020, and I happen to see Bill on social media, and I send him a message. Ironically, I was surprised that he responded and he asked about my life. We would talk for a while after that, but we never once brought up Julie or Sarah. Bill never married and found out he couldn't have biological children, and I knew that was tough for him. Unfortunately, Bill has passed away. I went to the funeral in secret just to pay my respects and then went back home. I expected nothing, so I was surprised when Bill's lawyer called and told me that I was left an inheritance. I was surprised, and so was Bill's ex-girlfriend because she tracked me down on social media and publicly criticized me where all of my extended family could see, and word got back to Sarah and Julie. They think that I'm a witch and my grandparents want me to split it to keep the peace, but I kind of don't want to given how they treated me. Am I the idiot? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Obviously not the idiot. Your grandparents are delusional. They did nothing to keep the peace. When those two were trying their hardest to ruin your life, you don't owe anyone a damn thing. Don't dishonor Bill like this. He wanted you to have this inheritance, not the woman who betrayed him. Comment two, not the idiot in any way, keep the money. I hope you were able to get your college acceptance and scholarship back. Regardless, do not share a dime of it. Especially not after what they did, they can only blame your aunt. You are not the idiot for anything as described. Now, for the update, thanks for sticking around to hear more about this mess. So after the whole inheritance drama, things got even more heated. Sarah and Julie were fuming when they found out about the money Bill left me. They started spreading rumors in the family that I had somehow manipulated Bill into leaving me everything. It was ridiculous. I hadn't even spoken to the man about them since we reconnected. But then out of nowhere, Sarah drops a news at the next family gathering. She claims she's been in touch with Bill all these years and that he regretted leaving. She even had letters supposedly from Bill expressing his desire to reconcile with Julie. The family was eating it up, but I smelled a rat. Those letters were too convenient, too perfectly timed. I decided to do a little digging. I got in touch with Bill's lawyer, the one who'd called me about the inheritance. I asked him point blank if Bill had been in contact with Sarah. The lawyer was clear. Bill had cut ties completely and never looked back. The letters were fakes. Armed with this information, I confronted Sarah at the next family dinner. It was a scene straight out of a soap opera. I called her out in front of everyone, and she tried to deny it, but the lawyer had given me copies of Bill's actual handwriting. The differences were clear as day. The family was shocked. Sarah's facade crumbled, and Julie was left in tears, realizing her mother's deception. But just when I thought things couldn't get any more twisted, Julie did something unexpected. 
She took my side. She was hurt and angry at her mother for lying and using her as a pawn in her games. Julie and I had a long talk after that. She apologized for hacking my email all those years ago and admitted she was wrong to blame me for everything that happened. We started to rebuild our relationship slowly. It was tough, but we were making progress. Then, as if we hadn't had enough drama, Sarah had a health scare. She had a heart attack and ended up in the hospital. The family rallied around her, and in that moment of vulnerability, she confessed to everything. The affair, the lies, the fake letters, everything. The family was in shock, but it was like a weight had been lifted. With the truth out in the open, there was a sense of closure. I didn't feel any satisfaction from it, though. It was just sad to see how far Sarah had fallen, how much she had hurt everyone around her. As for the inheritance, I decided to use a portion of it to set up a college fund for Julie's future kids. She was grateful, and it felt like the right thing to do. The rest I'm using to finally go back to school and get my degree. It's been a long road, but I'm getting there. Thanks for reading this far. It's been a rough ride, but I'm hopeful for the future. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.